I'm Vicky Chapman, Central Council Project Coordinator for the Ring and Remembers Project. I'm here in Chelmsford Cathedral and I'm stood in front of the Essex Association of Change Ringers Memorial to those ringers who died during the First World War. Hello, my name is Alan Regan. We're currently in Christchurch's Vicky Fields on the eastern edge of the City of London, my home tower. I'm the steward of the Rolls of Honour. They are memorial books that remember ringers who fell during the Great War and during World War II. I got particularly interested in, in these when I used to see them as I was going up to ring at St Paul's Cathedral. That's where the books are normally kept. And um, I used to look at the names and the towers where the ringers rang at. Towers I'd visited, my home tower even. And um, I asked the then steward of the Rolls of Honour where all the other information about these people was. But I was told, really, they're just a list of names. That I didn't agree with that. I decided that we should remember these people, and so my work started from there. The original Great War book has around 1,100 names, and the research that I've been doing um, has uncovered around about 400 new names, ringers, uh, we know that there were ringers, who were killed during the Great War. Um, so 1,500 uh, ringers who were killed during the Great War and 300 who were killed during World War II. Um, the Central Council was um, contacted by uh, the Big Ideas Company about a possible help with a campaign to recruit uh, new ringers. And to cut a long story short, I suggested that perhaps now, a hundred years on, we could recruit ringers to re symbol symbolically replace those that fell during the Great War. At that point, there were 1,400 ringers that we knew about, and that's what started the campaign Ringing Remembers. Following the work of Alan and the role of honours, he discovered that at least 1,400 ringers died during the First World War. So the ringing community felt it needed to commemorate this in some way. Alan and members of the Central Council met with an organisation called the Big Ideas Company, and between them, they agreed to set a project with the aim of recruiting 1,400 ringers to symbolically commemorate those who died. And thus, the Ring and Remembers campaign was born. In November 2017, Alan was interviewed by BBC Breakfast TV. And with the Rolls of Honours and some ringing in the background, the project launched and immediately had results with people asking, how do they get involved? Very quickly, we decided we needed to have some way of recording all of these people that were showing an interest in learning to ring in order to commemorate the Great War. We ended up having to create a database, which evolved over the time of the project. But at the very beginning, we started to gather some rich data on why people wanted to learn to ring. What was their reason? Many wanted to get involved because they were remembering a family member who fought during the war, or they wanted to ring to commemorate everybody and to do their bit on this 100th anniversary of the armistice, a unique opportunity in our lives today. Funding came from the UK government and supported some material that we used for publicity. Some 3,000 A3 posters and 60,000 trifold leaflets were produced for people to use for open days, training events, fates and general doorstepping to promote the Ring and Remembers campaign. So very quickly the database started to fill up. We needed to make sure each contact was linked to a tower to someone who could teach them to ring. We had numerous ringing teachers and local association contacts that we could put them in touch with. We were following up as well to make sure that they had been made contact with and had they started to learn to ring, how far had they got through their ringing progress. The database gave us a wealth of information, the most important of which was how were we doing to reach our 1400 ringers target. One of the campaigns that we did was to get an article on the BBC4 show The Archers. One of their characters was learning to ring for the Ringing Remembers campaign and over several weeks they took you through his learning journey and how he rang on the day. Probably the biggest single advocate for the campaign. Following that, the number of recruits 
but if the database went up existentially. Trying to keep on top of this was quite a headache. By 2018, Lord Vaughan launched the Ring and Remembers badge. This badge was designed to be sent to all new recruits that were participating in the campaign. Work was also going on with the government departments around the commemorative events planned for the 11th of November 2018. It was decided that ringing should take place at 12.30 in the afternoon to coincide with the National People's Thank You, a 10,000 man march past the Cenotaph in London. Across the globe, this was the challenge to ring at 12.30 local time. And we knew that ringing was taking place in Australia, in America, and at various other towers across Europe, as well as throughout the UK. By September 2018, those that had indicated on their registration page that they could ring unaided had reached the magic 1400 mark. A huge sigh of relief, we'd reached our initial target. But obviously we needed 1400 ringers to be still ringing by the November date. By October 2018, those on the registered database had topped 3000. We know some had dropped out over a period of time, but initially, two and a half thousand people were prepared to ring on November the 11th. The Ringing World Limited published many articles over the months that supported the campaign about stories about their families and why they were ringing and what ringing for Armistice 100 meant to them. They set up an event on Bellport so that ringers could record the ringing activity that they took place on the day. We crashed the system with over 3,000 entries particularly most of those on the 11th of November. All of those individual applications were published in the ringing world the following week. Many hundreds of people took part in the recruitment activity and I thanks today to each and every person who helped at a taste today or at a fate or at a welcome or a have a go session, whether it was formally through the Association of Ringing Teachers or informally local arrangements or through a friend. We know that many hours were put into the teaching of these new recruits and our thanks go to every single person that was involved in that process. Three generations rang for Armistice 100 at St Clement's Church Horsley in Derbyshire. This is the band of St Margaret's Draycott in the Moors in Staffordshire. Howard Allen rang in memory of both his grandfathers who served in World War I. Councillor Jane Elliott of Warp Upon Dean learns to ring and joins the team to remember the fallen and plays Last Post and Revelle. Linda Richardson enjoyed being one of the 1400 to learn the art of bell ringing, as well as the rich history associated with this special remembrance recruitment. Mary Jones rang in memory of her great uncle Philip Sadler, killed on the 13th of August 1915, a private in the 1st Essex Regiment. His father and elder brother were Norwich Diocese ringers and Mary likes to think that Philip too would have rung for the NDA had he lived. And three young ringers at St Mary's Shenfield, Amelia, Hannah and Sarah, are proud to be Ringing Remembers recruits. Thank you again to all of those people that worked on the project behind the scenes, to those that set up the database, to David Smith from Australia, to Andrew Hall in Derbyshire, who were fundamental in producing the database and evolving it over the course of the project. Thank you to Bruce and Eileen Butler over in Philadelphia, who were absolutely crucial to implement and chase and to cajole every single contact that we had and connect it to a teacher so that every person that expressed an interest in this campaign was made contact with and made welcome into the ringing fraternity. To Colin Chapman, Colin spent many hours after dark stuffing envelopes with badges and certificates and taking them to the sorting office so that those recruits who had registered got their badge in time for ringing on the 11th of November. Our task now is to turn to retention. How do we keep those ringing recruits going? And a lot of that is down to the warm and friendly welcome they've received in the ring community and I'm sure that many of them will continue. We have at least two and a half thousand ringers now that we didn't have two years ago, and we need to keep them, encourage them, and progress them. My final gratitude goes to those who fought in the Great War and paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we can continue to enjoy our hobby, 
to ring in celebration and in commemoration because ringing remembers them. <laughs>